Today's topic is potassium. And if I were to ask you what you know about potassium, what would you say? I can tell you what most people would say. Um, bananas, right? But beyond that, many people don't know much about potassium. So let's dive into what potassium is, what it does for us, what are the signs and symptoms of low potassium, and how do we treat low potassium? So first we'll talk about what it is. Potassium is a mineral, it's a nutrient that helps keep our cells balanced. It actually controls how much fluid is inside the cell. Now, something important to know is that it has a counterpart. It's the other side of that balancing scale and that is sodium. So sodium controls fluid levels outside the cells. Potassium is the fluid controller inside the cell and sodium is the fluid controller outside. And because these two nutrients, uh, the two minerals, they are connected in this kind of opposite way, they're usually studied and talked about a lot together. So many of you may already know that sodium levels affect our heart health, right? And high sodium intake is directly related to hypertension or high blood pressure. So now that you know that potassium is closely connected to sodium, you're also going to find that potassium affects our blood pressure. That means potassium levels should be considered when you're talking about managing blood pressure. So high sodium intake leads to higher blood pressure and it's the opposite for potassium. Higher potassium intake actually lowers our blood pressure. Researchers think that this could be because potassium actually relaxes the blood vessels and it causes them to get rid of excess sodium. And it makes sense getting rid of that extra sodium will lower your blood pressure, which means that a high potassium diet can decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke. It has actually been proven that people with high potassium and low sodium diets are less than half as likely to die from heart attack than people with high sodium and low potassium diets. So where does potassium come from besides bananas? Well, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables are high in potassium. So the more fresh produce you eat, the better. You'll also find that processed foods that are high in sodium are almost always low in potassium. This is especially true for processed meats and cheeses and bread. If you are looking for foods that are high in potassium, you could eat fresh fruit, dried fruit, beans, lentils, leafy greens and other vegetables, fish and nuts. I, I sometimes feel like a broken record, but seriously, you guys, the more whole foods you can get in your diet, the better. I know it seems obvious that processed foods aren't good for you, but when you're looking at increasing nutrients, whether it's potassium or vitamin C, vitamin A, fiber, the answer is always whole foods. So start there. Commit to making more meals at home, packing lunches instead of ordering takeout or delivery. Grab a banana instead of a highly processed snack bar. You'll find way more nutrients in fresh produce than packaged foods that have more than one ingredient. Whole foods are the perfect place to start when you're looking at increasing your potassium intake. Now, how do you know if you are low in potassium? The technical term for low potassium is actually hypokalemia. And some signs and symptoms of hypokalemia are fatigue, muscle cramps, constipation, and irregular heart rhythm. And honestly, if you have a mild deficiency in potassium, you may not notice symptoms at all. The best way to find out is to speak to your doctor who can do blood tests and they can find out what your potassium levels actually are. And then the treatment will depend on how severe your deficiency is. It's important to find out the cause of your hypo hypokalemia though, not just start eating more bananas and hope that that fixes it. The most common cause of hypokalemia is just not getting enough potassium in your diet. Someone who eats an excessive amount of processed foods, which are the ones usually high in sodium, are very low in potassium. So someone eating excess processed foods can have hypokalemia, but that's not the only cause. 
You might experience hypokalemia if you drink a lot of alcohol. Also, if you take certain medications that make the body get rid of a lot of potassium, kind of like diuretics, um, hypokalemia is also common in people who abuse laxatives, people who have eating disorders. If someone has experienced excessive sweating or even excessive vomiting from an illness like the flu or the stomach bug, um, it is also common in people with inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease or um, IBS. Uh, this is because the intestines don't absorb the nutrients like they should when they're in an IBS or a Crohn's flare-up, so the intestines can't absorb that potassium and hypokalemia is the result. So how much potassium is enough potassium? Well, adult males should consume 3,400 milligrams of potassium per day and adult females about 2,600 milligrams. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, a banana has about 400 milligrams of potassium. A medium baked potato with the skin on is about 900 milligrams. Um, if you take a quarter cup of raisins, there's about 300 milligrams in that. Now, as you can see, you know, potatoes are a great source of potassium, but if you turn them into potato chips or french fries, you add all that salt, you're basically canceling out all the positive effects of that potassium because you're consuming so much sodium, your blood pressure rises, all that potassium is being used to balance out the fluid levels in your cells. So no, I am not telling you to go and eat a whole bag of potato chips to get enough potassium. It's all relative, remember that. And my recommendation is always whole foods, minimally processed, Eat things that are as natural as you can, as close to how they came out of the ground as possible. I mean, think about it. Our human ancestors evolved eating very natural whole foods. Our ancestors survived on fruits, vegetables, and meats that are naturally high in potassium and naturally low in sodium. And nowadays we consume so much processed foods where salt is added to taste or for, you know, preservatives and our body is just not designed to process this much sodium. So this is why so many of us are low in potassium. This potassium sodium balance is just out of balance because of how much processed foods we all eat in comparison to those natural whole foods. So I hope all this helps you in your understanding of what potassium is and how to increase potassium for better health. Let me know what you want to hear next in the comments below and be well and I'll see you next time.